my teens, I ate tuna sandwiches and a couple of steaks a year and called myself a part-time vegetarian. This was still my dietary MO my freshman year at NYU, which is when I first began to think about writing a novel. I met this lovely, gentle girl named Chloe in one of my core classes, and I wanted to be friends with her even more when she confessed that she was already working on one. This is what I have so far, she said shyly, handing me an old school black and white composition notebook. It was two thirds full, maybe more, and I could tell by the hurried quality of her handwriting that she'd spent many evenings flush with inspiration. I knew enough to want to spend as much time as I could with people who weren't only talking about making art. So one night, Chloe and I went to this French restaurant in the West Village that is long since out of business. We ordered two deluxe steak dinners and the waiter asked if we wanted wine. Three months living in Manhattan and I still hadn't been carded. Chloe and I traded devious looks. Here we were, two 18-year-old aspiring novelists in a candlelit restaurant in New York City, talking about books and ambition, drinking illegally, eyes alight with our newfound kinship. I felt terribly grown up and excited because in a sense, we had settled in at this table for two to plot out at least the next 10 years of our lives. We were cliches, of course we were, but of all the elements in this scene, the one that makes me cringe is the meat on my plate. The following summer, I found a copy of Conversations with God on the bargain card at the Strand, that East Village institution advertising 18 miles of books. I dismissed the book as New Age baloney whenever I had to reshelve it at my bookstore job back in high school, but this time it practically leapt off the cart into my hands. I remember vividly reading the following lines on the A train one afternoon. A highly evolved being, in fact, would never consume an animal, much less fill the ground, and the plants which the animal eats with chemicals, then fill the animal itself with chemicals, and then consume it. A highly evolved being would correctly assess such a practice to be suicidal. Whether or not I believe these words actually came from God, they provoked a physical reaction in me. I did not want to be a flesh eater, not part time, not at all. But it took me another decade to unbelieve the cultural narrative that cows willingly give us their milk, that chickens have no use for their eggs, that these animals aren't made to suffer for what we take from them. None of that is true. What I'm about to write is a difficult thing for artists to face because we're the ones who are supposed to be seeing into the heart of the culture, testing out radical new ways of thinking and being and doing, calling bullshit whenever we see it. The truth is though, that we are not nearly as open-minded as we like to think we are. How often do we say that something is not for us when we haven't given it a chance? How often do we actually challenge the prevailing cultural norms? A Bright Clean Mind is coming out September 15th, 2019. And if you pre-order the book anytime before that date, I will send you a marvelous postcard illustrated by Alec Thibodeau, who's one of the wonderful vegan artists I profile in A Bright Clean Mind. Just pre-order the book from your bookseller of choice and either forward me the receipt or take a picture of it. I can mail the postcard directly to you. I can mail it to a friend or I can mail it in an envelope so you can send it yourself. And if you pre-order the book from your local independent bookshop, you'll get two postcards. Just one note, I am super busy until the middle of August. So if you pre-order before then, I will send your postcard out as soon as I can after August 15th or so. If you have any thoughts or questions about the excerpt I just shared with you, please leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.